everybody, and welcome back to the Dream Team Tonic Podcast, Season 2, Episode 22. Um, just straight off the bat, we'll give a big thanks to our 19 patrons and the new patrons that have, uh, patrons that have joined up. Sean Siddall, Alex Newton, Fatback Guitar, Sam Course, Arwin Vogue. Thanks very much for your support, it's much appreciated. Um, big welcome back to last year's winner and our monthly monthly guest, the champion Fergie. Are you there, Fergie? I am, evening gents. Thanks for having evening, me on mate. again, really appreciate it. Oh, it's great to have you back, mate. Uh, ben, are you there? How you doing, mate? All good, mate. Yeah. And and you, James? I'm here, Tony. I almost forgot your name there. It has been in every <laughs> month, hasn't it? <laughs> your brain's addled after too much booze, isn't it, over Christmas? Oh, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's worse, my liver or my brain, but uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to try and uh, get through this evening without any uh, too many problems, but great to have you all back on. Um, anybody who hasn't uh, been across and had a look at our Patreon, uh, it's at patreon.com forward slash Dream Team Tonic. Uh, have a quick look, you've got to support the guys. It's much appreciated. Um, Fergie, as usual, when you're on, you're the first up to go through your team, mate. Uh, let's have a look how you've done. Okay, I've had a decent this month. I think I think overall I've risen from about I think it was twenty one k. I think the last time I came on, and now I'm about nine k. So you know, it's still not pulling up up trees with this team, but it's been um, a decent month. Um, got got Edison in goals, um, and at the moment I'm playing a three four three because I used my last two transfers um, on the weekend or just just for the weekend. So I've got uh, Diaz and Trent. I've still got Rudiger, who uh, you know he's I just. I think I think all the Chelsea defence have had a bit of a stinker this this month, yeah. haven't they? They've kept like one clean sheet or whatever else. But I've still got Rudiger, so he'll be he'll be on the way out very very soon. I've got um, Bernardo Silva. I've got Sterling, who I who I brought in on a bit of a whim, to be honest, at the start of last month, and he's done really well for me. Jared Bowen as well, who's done really really well for me. Um, and I bought in uh, Lucas Moura uh, last week because um, Spurs had the two games. This weekend, gutted he didn't get anything against Watford. He did. He did get a seven rating, which was good. But they have got the game against Chelsea, and then they've got back to back matches again next week. So I kind of brought in yeah. Spurs players for the four games over the two weeks, and I've got um, Jota um, and Ronaldo. And I took out um, Salah for Kane uh, for Kane's extra games. Obviously, Salah scored eight. Kane only scored three, but Kane has got the extra game now, haven't he? And um, yeah. I'll have probably only moved moved to him anyway with this month's transfers. So. <laughs> Overall, doing okay. About nine k, as I say. My um, best team is trying his hardest to catch up to James. It's not. It's not quite there yet. It's about. I, th- I think I checked earlier. It's roughly about uh, five hundredth, which is doing okay. Um, and that team's looking good and got a transfer, yeah. so I'm quite happy with that team as well. So overall, okay, I think. And just you know, just um, steady. Not trying to be too clever. Just kind of you know looking at the looking at the month in advance and only taking out players really when I either see, you know, a massive opportunity or they're kind of injured or something like that. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's me at the moment. Going okay. Going good. Going good. Yeah. It's tricky putting them Spurs players in, obviously being a Spurs fan. What's it feel like? Obviously, because they're blanking and and Spurs aren't quite cutting it. It's like a double bubble, isn't it? Yeah, they played all right the last few. And obviously, um, Moira um, had an Outstanding match last weekend. The Dinny we got was it a goal and two assists or something? You know, he looked mm. really, really sharp. Um, yeah. Kane has looked better, I think, without without reward yet. You know, he he he, he could have, um, you know, he could have scored uh, a you know a fit a fair few goals. I think yeah. in the last couple of weeks he's only got the one. But um, I know it sounds stupid, but I'm actually targeting these Chelsea games because you know, as I mentioned, I think. Chelsea have looked really ropey at the back, and I think yeah. that um, Spurs players. I think I think they've looked much um, better actually and si- since Conte has been in charge. They've been both really good at the back and good going forward. I think they've got the a joint best XGC with Man City since Conte arrived, and one of the highest XGs and all you know, all those kind of stuff. So I think they've yeah. definitely improved. I'm targeting these next um, four games with Moura and Kane. Ideally, I'd like to have um, Son probably instead of Moura, but obviously because he's one one because he's cheap and two because he's he's a midfielder. I think you know he can do he can do all right. And um, so yeah, I'm I'm excited to hold Spurs over the next couple of weeks, and I'll take a look how the fixtures land. And then maybe we should, you know move at least one of them, or maybe. But I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll talk about that in a bit when we about the transfers plans. Yeah, definitely. When you look at the fixtures on on paper, they're tough, aren't they? Obviously, Chelsea double and and uh, such. But 
Um, the teams that have the good fixtures, like United and Everton, I mean, they're shy. So, <laughs> so, so I mean, you, you, we're waiting for like even at Everton. So much they're probably in the same boat as United. They've got they've got some great fixtures, but they just can't they just can't do it with them. No, I think I think the form team, the Arsenal look Arsenal look to be the form team, and yeah. um, I probably wouldn't have gone anywhere near them, but even their fixtures and are, are not the best either. This is the problem they got yeah. like Liverpool home and away, then Spurs. Okay, they got Burnley, then they've got Wolves who are not conceding, and then they um, blank as well because they um, you know with, with Chelsea with the World World Club Cup, so even if you bring in Arsenal players, yeah. the form players. You can't expect a lot of them, so it is it is quite tough at the moment. I was I was I was thinking that as I was doing a bit of prep. I really I don't think there's any really there's any real obvious teams to like jump no, on, no. and maybe the ones you want to jump on are ones you want to jump off yeah. kind of next month anyway. So I'm I'm sure we'll talk about this in a bit, won't we? It's a real real mismatch, and you're trying to it is. trying to pinpoint sort where where to attack. But I think it's gonna be a little bit of a lottery. Um, but yeah, anyway, James, your team next, mate. Um, yeah, um, I think you smashed it this week, not you, mate? Well, t- twenty nine points so far is actually pretty good, which which is quite funny, really, because you, if you can, if you look at the where I've got the points from, it's from Salah and Mares, whereas I've actually removed those two from a lot of teams, include, including my best team, <laughs> um, and um, perhaps I was a little bit premature there, but uh, yeah, so. Uh, but both Mares and Salah got me eight points each this week. So, uh, well, before they headed off to Afcon, um, got uh, got a four from um, Trent. Um, <clears throat> Robertson didn't play, um, but he'll be back, which is good. Um, Alonso got only got me two. I think he's on the chopping block in uh, when the new transfers arrive because of Chelsea's um, dodgy form and some blanks coming up. Yeah. Sancho's doing literally nothing for me at the moment. Um, Bernardo Silva got me four. Mora got me four. So Mora's a new addition to the team. Um, with my final transfer, I brought in, I got rid of Reese James and brought in Mora for the extra fixtures. Um, and um, yeah, he's been on pretty good form as well. Um, Jota and Ronaldo have done nothing for me, but uh, it's. Uh, yeah, so I reckon I'm going to have to spend at least two transfers um, with Mares and uh, uh, Salah having to go. But so I, I'm, I'll be—I don't know if I'll, I think I'll be tempted to get rid of Sancho and Alonso as well. So there's there's four. Um, I don't normally burn them all all quick uh, early in the month, but it is a short month. Um, we'll see. I'll have to have to. Uh, sit there and think about it a bit more, but um, certainly I'll be burning a couple of those transfers straight off the bat. Definitely. When when you were saying he had two transfers to you straight away, I thought you were looking at Sancho and Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Ronaldo's not doing. He didn't even see Ronaldo. <laughs> That's his fifth as well. No, it's all five guns. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I prefer Kane at the moment to him. Yeah, yeah. What's your plan there, Salah to Kane? Yeah, Salah, Salah to Kane. Um, I'm not sure who he'll bring into defence yet. P- possibly Regulon or yeah. um, Emerson Royale, depending on budget. Yeah, both good options. Should have loads of money now with Salah leaving. True. I think with, with um, Spurs, I think if I was bringing him in next weekend, I'd maybe be tempted just to wait for the FA Cup lineup because they play Morecambe. And just for example, if Sun starts and Kane and Kane doesn't, you could really get some really massive points yeah. off that one. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, if you, you know, if you, I've I've gone for Kane already, obviously, but there's a few fixtures this weekend that um, it's well worth waiting for the lineups. Um, definitely, Chelsea, Liverpool, and Spurs are three. They've all got they're all home and got really you guys are easy fixtures. There could be some big big uh, points in those games, maybe. Ooh. Yeah, definitely. Good shout. I've got that wrote down somewhere about the FA Cup lineups as well. Yeah. For in uh, the questions later, definitely want to monitor. Um, right, we'll jump onto my team. Um, might as well just jump straight past, <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> another one stung by the uh, the United lot with the Fernandez and Sancho 
Paul Fernandez has survived from this team, I'm not too sure, but Mendy and Rudiger obviously doing what they do best and getting minus points at the minute. Uh, Diaz and Kello, Cancelo has both zero. Foden, uh, that's uh, COVID, isn't it? So yeah. uh, he's not going to get a score many points anytime soon. Sancho and Fernandez both blanks. Bernardo Silva doing a little bit again before points. Salah, eight points. Um, did he have? To, he had two blanks, didn't he? Previously, first yeah. two blanks at season. Yeah, he did. Well, he he missed a pen on one, didn't he as well? What a killer that was in all yeah. in all formats. Come on, Casper. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about that game again. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Lacazette um, with a blank. Well, they played well, Arsenal. I'm lucky. I'm lucky against City, really. Um, I think they look excellent, Arsenal. I've been yeah, I'm really surprised, like how that that first half against Man City is one of the best first half performances I've, I've seen by any team this season. I thought they were absolutely excellent. They really yeah, they were. were. And they got some really good options, I think, going forward, haven't they? They was, rip, they was ripping City apart. Um, they were. They were. At the time, I said they need, they've got to get that second goal quickly, quickly yeah. while they're on top. And City weren't really at the races. It were only once they got the penalty. Um, obviously, then you knew. You just knew. Got that penalty. Then Gabriel starts messing around again, the red card. That's what happens, though. That's why that's why they win leagues, and that's that's why they're at the top of the league. But yeah, yeah, I'm looking for Arsenal there. Um, and Yota with a zero didn't get up to much. In one of probably the best games of the season, I thought. Um, Liverpool Chelsea were absolutely yeah. electric for 75 minutes. It was just constant. The crowd were uh, loud, nice and loud. It was just yeah, what a game, what a game. There's been some excellent games recently, haven't they? The um, Spurs and Liverpool game, and yeah, um, Liverpool and Chelsea. That, that Arsenal Man City. There's been some really amazing games on recently. It's great to see. It's great to have the crowds back. It makes such a difference, doesn't it? Definitely, yeah. as, as well with the big sides doing it. Because yeah, usually exactly. you come to them and they go, oh, "Do you know what? Actually, we'll, we'll we'll play a game of chess. We'll all sit off." Exactly. But that Chelsea Liverpool, they just thought, well, "That's just see who scores as <laughs> scores as many." Um, it really good to see. Like you said, there's been a few others as well. Just where they're just going toe to toe and yeah. let the best man win. That's been good. Yeah, really enjoyable. Ben, I think you always did slightly better than me. How, how, how <laughs> just, are you, mate? Just 14 points for me. Uh, 1,174 points. Uh, Edison, Blank, Cancelo, Blank, Rudiger, minus one. Trent, four. Foden didn't play. He's got COVID. Um, wonder how long he's going to be out with that. Hopefully we'll be back on Friday. Well, he'll be out for a while with his stinky attitude, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Silver, four points. Got an assist. Who was it? He, got, he won the penalty, didn't he? Mm. What did you think of that then? Did you think that was a penalty? Definite. Definite. I they, kept well. on about I think... it on, they kept going on about it on BT saying, oh... The ref, the uh, VAR shouldn't got shouldn't have got involved, saying it wasn't a penalty. Like Tosh. saying it, it was definitely a penalty, in my opinion. He went yeah. over his leg, like yeah. yeah I, I thought the, he fouled him first before the shirt. I pulled. don't even think the pull was yeah. the pound. I think <laughs> yeah. he, he clearly flew over his leg, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, De Bruyne blank, Bowen blank. He was my player of the week last week with fifteen points. Mm. So he's, he's been incredible, week, haven't he? Yeah, he's been great. Uh, my player of the week somehow this week is Manny. <laughs> Seven Get points. <laughs> Get That's his first goal in ten, I think. <laughs> yeah. He should have been sent off, shouldn't he? <laughs> no, he was looking at the ball. Ah, oh, give me that crap. He used one arm. One arm, boom. Did. He was the chance Liverpool, for a million. Liverpool He's so cheap. Like, yeah. Liverpool like an early red card challenge, don't they? Did it against Leicester the other week. That Morton <laughs> took out um, Ricardo. <laughs> well, what do you say? It's too early to send them off, isn't it? Yeah. It's like you've got like a, a minute grace period where you could just go and absolutely clatter somebody. They call it, <laughs> oh, yeah, they call it's a bit too early. We don't want to ruin the game. Yeah, they call it the Vinnie Jones minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, Jota and Ronaldo did nothing. What about a uh, Jose Sarr? He's had an unreal last last eight games. Oh, don't touch on that, mate. I had Semedo in my team as my enabler, 
and he, he, he didn't give me much, probably four four points a year. And then I took him out, and I'd, I think they've conceded one goal since, or two goals since. It's absolutely yeah. unreal. The they've amount of clean sheets they've had in a row, or, or, the, or the last two the last eight games. The last eight games, they've yeah. had six clean sheets, and they've only conceded <laughs> a goal against Liverpool and a goal against Man, uh, Man City. Clean sheets against Man United, Chelsea, West Ham, and... It was the other one. Yeah, Man-, Man City, Chelsea, and Man Man United. Sorry, oh, gone up. Man Chelsea, Man United, and West Ham. Yeah, clean sheets. Unreal, so, isn't it? Yeah, he's had three star mans this season as well. I mean, really, all the Wolves fans should be sending uh, Daniel Levi uh, Christmas cards mm. and uh, thank you messages for. Coming and getting Nuno from him because <laughs> Bruno Large is doing a cracking job of them. Um, they're it, solid. Large. I mean, you, you watch how they play tonight against United. The football they're playing, it's just they're just short of goals. I mean, yeah. if they had the yeah. goals, I would tell you what, they'd be a lot higher up that table because they're a very good football inside and they're solid at the back. But yeah. they've got Adama Traore, haven't they? He can <laughs> run with it. He can run with it. But God. The end product, I mean, what is he? He might be gone in the January chance of Rinder, but there's so many rumours around him, isn't there? There's a lot of rumours he's, he's wanted at Spurs. Yeah. I think he's well at Spurs if he went to Spurs, mind. He guaranteed a seven rating, I would guess, every every game of Spurs <laughs> if he played, didn't he? Looking out. Definitely. Definitely. Right. Let's jump in to the listener questions. Um, new patron first up DT Patrick uh, he's asking a block City midfield um, and change to any other City midfielder as and when Pep rotates um, Ben first yeah. up there mate yeah I can see what he means like if, if he's on block City midfield now and uh, he sees on Friday one of his players ain't playing and he can move on to another one I don't see the problem with it because you're going to want City in February. Yeah. The only thing is with City only having three games in January is a, is a bit of a problem. Like you might put somebody in who plays against Swindon on Friday and then he won't play the next game against Chelsea next week and then you've, you've only got two games out, maybe get two games out of that player. So, so maybe it's a maybe it's a move across to somebody else but don't move your whole block, just move maybe one player Keep, so I'd probably keep like KDB, um, and maybe maybe look at moving Silver onto someone like Bowen, because I know Silver's playing a lot of games at the minute, but he's he's not really producing now. KDB's back in the side. Could be a possibility anyway there, because uh, or you could go to Mora, who's got more games. Even Madison, he's. Playing brilliant, and the fixtures yeah. for Leicester are ridiculous at the minute. We said it on the pod before. Yeah, what do you guys think, James? I don't. I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure it's as easy as is it. You know, as it as it sounds, is it? When you've got two games in a week, like you, mm. like I think Ben was alluding to, you might not play one, but they play then play the other. Um, I, I'm not sure I would be using my transfers to to rotate the. City midfielders, um, you know, every, every week, I, I would I would generally stick with the best ones and uh, and and keep them and use my transfers for for other moves because it's quite difficult to predict because of course if they don't start they might come off the bench and yeah. I think you get yourself into a mess there and just burn through your transfers pretty quickly. Yeah, plus you've got Salah to move on as well, and you probably got another one like Mares. There's kind of yeah. a transfer start with got to use up. I think he's talking about sort of um, looking at the team sheet and then going, well, yeah. KDB's not starting today. I'll put in Foden yeah. and so forth. But I'm, I'm, in reality, I'm not sure that's uh, the best way to use your transfers. What do you think, Fergie? No, I definitely wouldn't this month because I think that um, City are one of very few teams, actually, who are only going to play once now per week until the international yeah. break. Um, all, Almost every other team is going to have... Um, are either in the Carabao Cup, um, or they've or they've 
or they're going to have rearranged midweek games, either next week or the week after. The ones for the week after haven't been planned in yet, but mm. a lot of teams are going to have extra games as well. So certain yeah. teams could have five or six matches to Man City's three. Mm. What I would say is going into February, you look at the fixtures and they're absolutely spanking. You know, they, they, they start off uh, home to Brentford and then they're at Norwich. So I would personally, what I would maybe do is kind of hold on a bit or use transfers elsewhere, then and, and you know, and then, and then as we went to February, Mars will be back then as well. Um, you can use your transfers then, but I think there's much better opportunities this month to use your transfers for you know some extra gains in January. Yeah, definitely. I don't want to be touching on City, um, bringing in City players. Like I say, the Swindon game as well. You you very likely he's going to put out a few kids, mm. unless he's one. I know there's been big talk, haven't they, about keeping players going keeping players' legs fresh. So whether with it being their only game uh, the week, they might play a full side. And then if you Even the chunk... full team, like Mares is at AFCON. Um, Foden probably won't be available, you guess, because of COVID yeah. Yeah. as well. So then you're, you know, you're, you're thinking of maybe Silva, De Bruyne and, and, and Sterling. And I do agree they're really good options. And, and they are good options. But if they're mixed in with kids like, you know, Palmer and a couple of others, yeah, they... They could do well in that one game, but the week after, they're home to Chelsea, which is not going to be an easy game. And like I say, there are other teams that have just just got far more, you yeah, know, far better games. I think. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right, moving on. Um, David eighty seven has been on. Um, he's got his team there, which I'll we'll read through as well for people that are listening on the hub or on the Patreon or on Spotify. Um, thoughts on moves for this team going into January he's got 0.8 in the bank Kane for Salah the obvious Sancho's not paid off so looking towards Mora or Madison who I've been certain would tail off but he's still scoring for fun streaky yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be brave and cashing on Ronaldo for a Yota and then upgrade Sancho to save Foden who will surely get more game time with Mares missing for the month or even Son lots to ponder cheers guys um, so just a quick run through his team, just uh, for the people listening. He's got Ederson, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Diaz, Cancelo, Robertson, Sterling, Sancho, Bilva, De Bruyne, and Salah Ronaldo. Um, going to kick us off on this, James. Sure. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I think that the, the defense is fine. I wouldn't touch that defense. Um, he's got with the two Liverpool. And three, three city if you can include the goalkeeper. Um, Sancho is not looking good at the moment, is he? The only problem there, of course, is he's not actually very expensive. So, um, he's, I think he's two point eight million. Um, if, you, if you add the um, add the point eight he's got in the bank, it doesn't give you a lot. You might want to consider. I think West Ham have got some nice fixtures actually coming coming up. Um, yeah. I can see a lot of goals in those fixtures as well. Um, they've got the likes of Leeds twice and Norwich. Um, so if you didn't want to burn, if you if you just wanted to p- play it safe and uh, um, not use too many transfers, then, then you could look at that. Um, like you say, Ronaldo's not doing brilliantly at the moment. You could use him as a cash cow to uh, enable some upgrades elsewhere. But um, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Very good. I like the West Ham shouts. They're they're definitely the team I'm going to target. If I I think you know um, I, th- I think Bowen is probably a bit out of reach now. I think he's about three point eight or three point nine something. So he's maybe just out of reach for you. But if you did another move, I'm tempted to take Ronaldo out this week. I'm, I'm just having a look at the fixtures and they've got um, Villa in the FA Cup, which is going to be a really hard game. Villa are going yeah. to be bang up for it. Um, and 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 then the week after they're away to Villa. They could have an extra game put in um, between the 14th and 21st, and then they got West Ham. But um, I am I am tempted to maybe move on potentially Ronaldo for maybe Antonio, but I think I think it depends on looking at um, the uh, West Ham FA Cup lineup. If if Antonio or, or Bowen start in that game, they're going to have Leeds in the cup, Norwich at home, and then Leeds again. Um, 
all at home in the matter of a week and they could score so many goals in that period. Yeah. So I, I think I'd be tempted if, if Antonio and Bowen start just to maybe move Ronaldo and Sancho onto Antonio and Bowen because West Ham's fixtures, so they would go Leeds, Norwich, Leeds, then you go United, which as we know at the moment is, <laughs> is not a difficult fixture. Yeah. Then we're home to Watford and then they're away to Leicester. And Leicester have started playing a bit better, but they're still quite leaky at the back. And then they got Newcastle, so it's like you could, they're they're quite a long term hold, I think, as well. Um, you know, and you could jump on the two and then maybe move off the one. You know, maybe later for someone else. But I think they would be my moves. I think the rest of his team looks. Oh, you know, obviously got um, Salah as well. So no, you can move on to you know whoever you want there. But I think Antonio is the person I'm. Antonio and Bowen are the, are the players I'm probably <clears> most excited about, and it, it and they're easy to get to because they're priced. Antonio is only three point seven million at the moment. It's absolutely yeah. crazy. So uh, and Bowen's about the same. Um, I think that's what I'd do, and then maybe reassess after a week or two. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and maybe move one on, or if they're both playing really well, leave them both in. But um, I looked at Antonio's ownership actually; he's only twelve percent owned, so he's a bit of a you know a bit of a differential as well. Um, yeah, he had a bit of a barren run, hadn't he? So everyone jumped he away did. from him. He did. And his price uh, fell as well, didn't it? Yeah, kept him quite well. Ben? Yeah, Antonio's starting to get some attacking returns now. He's got uh, attacking return in his last three now, hasn't he? Yeah. And those fixtures are beautiful. <laughs> but yeah. can he, can he uh, play two games in a week? It's, he might not play the full 90 Will he? He'll probably play 70 minutes against Leeds and then hopefully he'll play against Norwich. But I don't know. Yeah, he's definitely one to think about. Um, yeah, I, three point, go on. 3.7 years. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely look at um, getting uh, Kane in there or, or Son, but I'd probably go for Kane because he's on penalties. Um, I, think, I think you could probably... If, Obviously, he's doing the Salah to Kane move. Um, you could probably just go Sancho to Antonio and have Kane and Antonio in there. Yeah. yeah. I think that should yeah, yeah. give him enough money there. Um, he's got quite a lot of options. Um, like, like I say, the back line don't look too bad. I know City haven't got many, many games to play, but you don't want to be making all the transfers out. Yeah. And then back. next month, you're chasing them back in. You, you can't be doing that, so... Yeah. So like small tweaks here and there and bringing these players that have got some cracking fixtures. West Ham, Spurs haven't got the quality of fixtures as probably West Ham's are a bit better. But still, when Harry Kane starts firing, I, I think did that goal, he was offside. That, um, I think we yeah. touched it on pod last week. The control and the finish was, that's Harry Kane. Mm-hmm. I know he was offside, by what? By, by his left, left testicle, but... <laughs> it, it, I, I'm sure they just bend those lines. I mean, it's a goal all day long, that quality finish, and that's what we've uh, we've, we've come to know from him. I think, as Fergie touched on earlier, um, the XG and XGC, uh, the opposite way. Spurs have improved at both ends. They're creating more chances, definitely, and the quality of chances is improving. Um, I can only see Spurs getting better towards the end of the season. Conte's definitely having a, a really good impact now on that Spurs side. Um, I think everyone's pulling in the same direction there. Um, yeah, it's not a bad side. You've got a lot of options. Um, I'm sure you'd be able to pick out a few of them and, and hopefully they work out for you, David. So it's a bit of a, a punt, I think. You know, I think between like Bowen, uh, sorry, not Bowen, uh, Mora and Maris, I think my, I think my favourite pick in that kind of area at the moment is, is Bowen because of his four-man fixtures. But I think Madison and, and Mora, uh, Madison longer term as well because um, uh, are they in Europe? Oh, they are. Yeah. I'm sorry, they're, they're they are. The, yeah, the so play, he uh, he could be a really good long term oh. pick as well, Madison, couldn't he? So uh, mm. it, the only issue is is they got so many injuries up front, but that could even be an opportunity for Madison, you know, to kind of you know to um, uh, false nine step like up a bit more, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So I think Madison's a really nice long term pick. He's, he's definitely on my radar as well. Yep. Yeah, they've, they've got a playoff in uh, next month, so they've got a double double leg. Next ah, that's what it is. Isn't it? Oh, and so if it's they, a playoff, you guess it's against a weakish team uh, as well. They're then. Playing Randers from Denmark. Right there we go. <laughs> Massive game. <laughs> Massive game. <laughs> 
Right. Cheeky John, Steve Cheek. Uh, with some Premier League teams having much less fixtures than others in January, should we be trying to get some of the key players' performance from teams with the extra games? Um, and one more question. Is there trouble at Chelsea? Plus, with the World Club World Cup upcoming, is it time to get rid of them all? Um, Fergie, you can kick us off on this one, mate. Yeah, so they only play three different teams um, before the 19th of, of February. And they play Spurs three times in the next two weeks, <laughs> um, or three weeks rather. And they play Man City, but they have got Chelmsford at home in the FA Cup. Um, which could be a decent way. It's just a shame it's the first, it's the first one because you are, you know you're probably going to want to hold them for that. I would guess if you yeah. have Spurs midweek. So I think I think I'd be tempted to keep for this next week. Um, mind you, I'd I check the ordering of the FA Cup. The ordering of lineups is really important because let's just say, for example, you know they completely rest Rudiger. <laughs> just as an example, I would then take out Rudiger definitely for someone else because as I say they, they then go Spurs, Man City, Spurs, blank, blank, blank. Um so that I think that would be my advice um on Chelsea and kind of touched on the extra games. Yeah. Uh, West Ham are, are definitely a team I would target, I think. Um Arsenal is a it's a tough one Arsenal, but Saka he's what is he like four point one um then you get Madison and Bowen for a little bit less. I know Martinelli's two point four, but I think he's a, I think he classes a forward here in this yeah. game. So that's all where it takes up a spot, which is quite awkward. Um, but yeah, you know my my kind of thing at the moment. I think I'm gonna, I've got Bowen already, so I think I'm gonna try and target those West Ham games with one <laughs> fixture, and then see, and then maybe move off one of them again. So that's like short term targeting and move off maybe, um, but obviously see how they go, but. I think it's opportunities this month. Like I say, like you would guess a lot of people have got Jota, you know, in place already, I would guess, maybe Trent. Yeah. Um and people like that. But yeah, because it's such a short month this month, I think you can afford to take one or two gambles. Um, you know, and then and then maybe get your team ready for February then, potentially, yeah. Yeah. James? Um yeah, well, to be fair, I think Fergie's covered it pretty well there. Um, yeah. yeah, like I said earlier, I'd, I'd be looking at um, West Ham and Spurs and possibly even Leicester to get some extra fixtures. Yeah, Madison's looking attractive. Mm. Yes. Um, then, would you be putting in Madison yourself? I'm, I'm tempted to do it, but I just <laughs> know as soon as I put him in, he'll he'll go off the pan. Go off the <laughs> You're gonna break him. Yeah. But those fixtures are really good, and he's going to be one of the main men now with Vardy out for a month. Iheanacho's off to AFCON. Dakar's out till the 8th, 15th of January. So we've got no recognised centre forward. We've got Luckman and Barnes just back in training. So um, they're going to be the, the main attacking players, Madison as well. So Tillemans Who's... will be on penalties. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, Ch- yeah, I, w- I wouldn't be jumping off Chelsea this week. Well, as soon as you get your transfers, because it's a double game week. But then after that, they play Man City. So then, like you say, Tottenham after that, and then it's they're off to uh, World Cup. So yeah, that's when you're going to start looking at moving off them. But like short term, um, you could look at Liverpool, couldn't you? Moving across to some Liverpool defenders. But uh, man, you want Man City defenders for February, I think. Yeah. So it's, it's tough. Definitely. I think, obviously, we it'd be interesting with Liverpool because mm. how they're going to react to losing two of the most dangerous forwards in the league out their attack. I, I know, mm. obviously, Minamino and Origi are going to come in. Yota's still... He's a quality player, Yota. It's how how that will affect the pressure of their back line and on their midfield when... It's not quite, they've not quite got the quality up top. I, it'd be interesting. Obviously, time will tell, but it's one that worries me a little bit. Maybe for the Liverpool clean sheets and fixtures are good though, aren't they? For Liverpool, I think you got Shrewsbury, Arsenal, Brentford, Palace, 
and then come back FA Cup fourth round if they get through. <laughs> They'll get through there. And then um, Leicester after that. So, yeah, I, I, I do like the Liverpool defence for this month. I see a few of them scoring. I mean, Palace, I like the look of Palace. Um, I've watched quite a few times over the last mm. month or so. They look a decent side. Um, Arsenal, obviously, one of the foreign teams. They might sneak a clean sheet against Shrewsbury. Uh, <laughs> she, she, she piss off, Tony. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we have to see how that goes. Obviously, losing losing the top two players from up top. Um, who knows, James? He might get an early exit. Well, you never know. Um, Egypt aren't one of the favourites, I know, um, but there's they'll probably get through to the quarterfinals. Um, and um, I think, yeah. Um, I don't know about Senegal. I think they're. I think they're the favourites, actually. Are they? One of them. One of them up with Algeria. Yeah. 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 I'd be. Um, I'd be surprised if Liverpool played a strong team in that FA Cup game against Shrewsbury because they've all just played a lot of football. Yeah. And it falls either side of Arsenal with the Carabao Cup as well. Mm. So, and Liverpool notoriously, I think, don't tend to put out strong teams. So they've had some early exits the last the last mm. few years, haven't they? So yeah. I'd be surprised if he played. Jota and maybe Trent, you know, in those ones personally, but you never know. You never know. Yeah, I can't see him playing them. Although saying Surely. that, um, Origi's got a knee injury at the moment. Um, um, Minamino has um, a slight tweak as well, although I think he's only out for like a week. So there's not, and Firmino's got COVID. So there's not a lot of options oh, up yeah. front at the I moment. Think about that. So um, hopefully they, they'll come. Some of the reserve, well, Origi and Min- Minamino. Hopefully, they'll be back sharpish because otherwise, we're we're in trouble. Really Actually, Chamberlain at front in a four-five-one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really, I God, really like, I would have really liked to uh, Minamino as a gamble in a put one of your poor teams two million, and he's a midfielder in the game playing mm. playing as a wide forward. Yeah. It could be very interesting against with the because they play the weakened sides in the uh, Carabao yeah, Cup and yeah, the I FA agree Cup. With that. Do you remember I I did that I did that gamble with one of yeah. my sides didn't I earlier uh, with in the Carabao Cup I think a few rounds ago I stuck Minamino in and he actually scored but yeah, he, did. he didn't get a hat full you I think if you're going to make a move like that you you really want two or three goals don't you Yeah he's got make five goals this well. season Sorry he's already got five goals this season just from playing bit part. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it's a, it's not a crazy idea, but yeah, uh, just as a fourth midfield gamble, that's all. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you're attacking like a short term prize, like a monthly prize or a weekly mm. prize, maybe. Yeah, why not? Um, right. C. Tobbs has been on. Fergie, what's your transfer plans for January? And thoughts on Lanzini now? Ben Ram is off to the Afcon. Obviously, you get a bit more game time there, won't he? I think Lanzini looks a really good shout. He's, well, he looks to be on penalties as well, doesn't he? And he's, um, mm. I don't look earlier, so I didn't know how much he was, but he's, <clears> he's 2.2 million, so he's really, really mm. cheap. And we've already mentioned West Ham's fixtures, yep. so I think I think he could be a really good shout. I, I personally prefer Antonio and Bowen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think, you know, I've got, I've got no reason to, st- you know, and, and he's on form as well, right? So, you know, yeah. I think he's a really good shout. In terms of transfer plans, so I did, I did hold off in December and I managed to keep back a couple of transfers. Um, to take out, you know, um, Salah and I think I took Alonso out or or Reece James or someone like that. Reece James, I think it was. So, you know, we talked last month, didn't we, about saving transfers back because there will always yeah. be problems to sort out. So, managed to get my team into pretty good shape going into January. Um, but I'm I'm looking. I, I suppose I'm just looking down all the fixture lists and. You know, obviously, um, Spurs have got pretty decent fixtures. Liverpool have as well. We touched on West Ham, but I've got pretty good coverage on most of those. So, I think the only transfer I'm really interested in, um, in the you know, in the very short term, is potentially uh, Ronaldo to Antonio. Um, just looking at my t- team, actually, is that sensible? Yeah, I've, I've taken um, Salah already, and I've got Kane and Jota. Won't be touching. So, potentially. Ronaldo to Antonio, if Antonio starts this weekend, even if he doesn't mind, he scored four against Norwich uh, a couple <laughs> of seasons ago, didn't he? And yeah, they got them at home, yeah. home midweek. 
Um, and then I'll look to take out Rudiger the week after. I'm not sure for who yet. But I really do think, you know, that, again, it's probably worth it because there's no massive, massive obvious team to real pile on to. Um, tend to just hold, you know, just hold a couple back again because, like I say, I've managed to get, you know, rid of, of Salah and Reese James already, whereas I know a lot of people, for example, will have those two still to sort out. Mm. Um, you know, unless we go into February and March and stuff, as I say, I like to try and play the game so I can, you know, I'm always kind of on the front foot rather than having to react all the time. Um, but yeah, there doesn't seem to be a real team at the moment that you can look at and go, I really want to pile on that team. Even even, even yeah. West Ham, you know, because they won't have Europe, they've got a quiet February, for example. So I'm not going to want to go in on three or four players for West Ham, maybe a couple. Um, but yeah, at the moment, like I say, I, th- I think, I haven't really put, you know, masses of thought into it yet, but I think Ronaldo to Antonio is what I'm definitely looking at. And then maybe uh, Rudiger to... I don't even know yet, to be honest. I'd have to give it a bit of thought. It won't be a Chelsea defender, that's for sure. Or a United defender. Um, potential, you know, I, I can probably afford to go to Cancelo um, in this team who I haven't got. You know, a kind of longer term move. But I think that'll yeah. probably hold at least two back um, because we can hold our transfers in January. Obviously, we've got the international break at the end of the month, haven't we? And yeah, you yeah. never know what's going to happen in that international break with COVID as well, yeah. right? or injuries. So we can make our final January transfers. I think it's Thursday night, the third of February, kind of at, you know ahead of then. So I'd like to think that I'll do that. Whether it happens or not, obviously depends on COVID and things. But I also think with COVID and the current environment, trying to plan for the next two or three weeks now, I think is probably a bit, you know. A bit ambitious as well because there yeah. will be players, you know, and you'll be getting like imagine. Well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about it now. Right? Imagine I take out Ronaldo for Antonio, and Antonio gets bloody COVID and misses all those three games, and Ronaldo plays twice and gets a goal in each game. I feel yeah. absolutely sick. So that's yeah. why I'm not I'm not too thick on going all in personally. So they have my very loose plans for January. I know they're a bit boring at the moment, but um, you know, it's. It's been working in terms of I keep I keep having my rank every month, which I'm you know yeah. I'm ha- I'm I'm perfectly happy with, um, and just you know Bowen had a really quiet spell in December, but I held on to him, you know, and it's paid off, yeah, and things like that. So you just have to hold on to the ones who you you know you think are good long term picks. Yeah, sounds good. Um, just obviously just jumping down to the next question. Walmart Statham has been on about um, Antonio, so just touching on the back of. What Fergie's just said about obviously Antonio being in his plans. What what your what's your thoughts, James, and Antonio, and um, were his hamstrings or his COVID uh, COVID boosters all hold up? Um, well, he's he's just come back from COVID, hasn't he? So hopefully he won't get COVID again. <laughs> not not in the near term. Tell my missus um, that she's she's on a third attempt. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I saw Antonio in an interview uh, a couple of days ago. And he said, whilst he was out with COVID, he had time to reflect on his performances, you know, and and, it, and his drought. And um, of course, he just come off, come off the back of scoring a goal. And I, I just, you know, when you get a little inkling that, that a player might be coming back into form, you don't, yeah. can't really put your fit. It's just those little those little things where you, you look confident. He said, well, you know, I've, I've given it some thought. Um, I think Antonio should be coming back into people's thoughts because, um, yeah, he's, he looks like he's good. They've got the great fixtures. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, he's actually got a bit of form for a change now as well. So, yeah, I've, um, I'm thinking about bringing him in myself. Yep, good stuff. Ben? Yeah, totally agree. Um, I've got him down as one of my um, four strikers I'm looking at. Um, so, yeah, he's he's got the fixtures. He's, he's back in form. Very cheap, so yeah, definitely up there for me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, he's a nice chap as well, Antonio. I like Antonio. Um, but yeah, hopefully uh, we don't break him by <laughs> jumping back on. Like you say, twelve percent on is a little bit of a differential at the minute. Um, right, Andy Barnett. Some clubs with rearranged games to be played could possibly have more fixtures to be played than some clubs in Europe. 
the rearranged fixtures will probably be played at the same time as the Euro games in midweek. If you were planning to put players in from three clubs who have the extra games, which three clubs and which player from that club? Um, ben? Do you mean clubs that are not in Europe? Three clubs that are not in Europe? Yeah, that have the extra games. Right. Well, obviously Spurs are, are one of the main targets you got to look at. Uh, and Arsenal. But then Arsenal's probably got two blanks in February. So you've got to be careful with them because they've got yeah. the Chelsea blank and then they might be blanking if they're out of the Carabao Cup final because they play Liverpool in, on the same weekend of the final. So if they don't get through, they'll be blanking that weekend. Mm. Uh, but yeah, they've got a lot of fixtures this month, but then you might have to move off again next month. And then you've got Everton, who's got great fixtures as well, but pff, they don't look too good, do they? Calvert Lewin, <laughs> he's got he had three goals in three games at the start of the season, being out ever since the start of the season. Comes back, gets a penalty. You're thinking, ah, oh, he's back back in the goals, and he whacks it against Crossbar. <laughs> uh, strange penalty, isn't it? Where he only yeah. takes like a step or two mm. back. It's mm. Also, he's putting pressure on himself to. No, oh, strange. Yeah, I don't like them penalties. Mm. You don't have a run up, aren't you? Got yeah. to have a run up. Yeah. Whether, whether you do the Jorginho at the end of it or whatever, but at least just take a few steps back. Uh, more than two. Don't well, like that. I want to give a shout out to Anthony Gordon. He was brilliant the other day, mm. yesterday, wasn't he? Wow. Yeah. He had two. He won a penalty and scored two goals. He's only zero point nine million in the game. <laughs> wow. Hey. Flipping it. And he got yeah. an assist last week against Chelsea as well. So he might be starting the. Get yeah. yourself about. You if you're desperate I mean. for funds, he could be one, couldn't he? Definitely. Yeah. He probably won't need the funds now with Salah and James going. No, that's injured. right. That's right. Yeah, yeah I think we'll be flooded with funds, won't we? Yeah. I, oh, that's 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 just another thing. So I did uh, write it down earlier, just in terms of a plan for the month. I would I would personally just just be just. I'd be a bit careful with the funds not to spread them out a bit too finely within your yeah. team because yes, otherwise you're going to yes. have to make four transfers to get back Salah and yeah. Ronaldo, say. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, if I do Ronaldo to Antonio, I very likely won't spread those funds. I'll probably just leave it so I can go straight back to either Salah or Ronaldo in a couple of weeks in one move rather than two or even three sometimes. Um, yeah. It's probably yeah. worth mentioning that. Yeah, definitely a good shout. Burnley have quite a few games to uh, rearrange. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about a Chris Wood up front? Cornet, Cornet's the one. Cor- Maxwell Cornet. Cornet's off to isn't he? After, is he off to the Afcon? Yeah, I think he is actually. Yeah. Is he Ivory Coast, point. isn't he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, he is some player. He is. Isn't He's he? so he is. good. They've had to move him from left back to forward. <laughs> yeah, it's true. He signed him as a left back, didn't he? Yeah. His, yeah. his minutes per goal is something be- is better than Salah's or something, and it's a much smaller sample size. But I was reading that on Twitter, <laughs> Twitter earlier today. It's crazy. Brilliant. And then there's probably Watford. Few games, few games to rearrange. What about Dennis? He's off is, to Afcon, is he not? Is he not going now? No, it's no, no, no. Did you not, not hear about that? No, has he has he changed now? Is he is he back off that? Uh, it's, it's off because. Um, uh, I don't know. They, there was some mix up, and the paper they didn't submit the paperwork or something in time. Um, and I think Dallas um, didn't get the assurances he, that he needed about his place in the side. So I think they've just gone. Well, you, you didn't give us the paperwork in time, so we're not releasing him. Right. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, Spurs, Arsenal. You know, you're not really going to touch. Much else. I, I was, I West was, Ham, uh, obviously. Yeah, West Ham. I, I was joking with the uh, Chris Wood up top. <laughs> uh, definitely don't be uh, looking into that. But I think we've touched <laughs> quite a lot of players the Spurs and uh, West Ham and Arsenal. Obviously, Saka, Martinelli. Um, Odegaard. I'll give a little bit of mention for mm. Odegaard as well, who, who has looked absolutely electric recently for, um, for, Ar- yes. for Arsenal. You get, getting some good positions as well. Um, so yeah, once I mentioned there, DT Patrick, um, Ben, you did um, clear most of this up a little bit earlier with, with Vardy injured. Ian Atchu off to the um, African Cup of Nations. Leicester have decent fixtures. Do you think Dakar could be a differential? Obviously, you told him 
he's out till February, is he? Yeah. Yeah, so he's you... out till the fifteenth. Fifteenth. He's got a thigh injury. Yeah, yeah so, so after that he's definitely an option. Excellent player. Um, he is a good player. You could look at Luckman. <laughs> He's uh, got two goals in two games against Man City and Liverpool. Um, and he's only 2.3 million and he's playing up front and he's a midfielder on the game. So it could be a differential for a lower lower side or like a monthly prize. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. Um, Jordan, L93, Connor, resident Connor, and Mahmood are all asking similar. Um, basically, Salah's replacement. Um, who's the best re- Salah replacement? Fergie, one name. Who's the best one? I go for Antonio, and I'd hold the fans back and then go back to Salah. I think that's yeah. Oh yeah, I, he's my. He's the one I'm looking at for these next two or three weeks. Ciao, James. I suppose I've, I've given it maybe a bit more of a long term view, but I would say Kane. As a long-term punt. Well, I, I wouldn't describe Kane as a punt. But. Well, <laughs> there's, there's all, all sorts going on this season. Um, yeah, Ben? Yeah, I agree with James uh, Kane for me. Just looking back in, back in business now, I think. Get go back to extra games. Yeah, go back to Fergie. If you didn't have Kane, would it still be Antonio? Uh, I think it depends who starts the FA Cup because mm. Spurs are home to Morecambe. Yeah. yeah, and so you know if, if you know if he plays that, if if Son starts that, I'd even be tempted to go for Son. Yeah, just for that one fixture because if Spurs do um four or five nil, I, I've I've got to be honest, and this is probably wrong of me, but I don't know a great deal about Morecambe. But I would, you know if Spurs are even a reasonably decent side I'm, I'm guessing we're expecting a bit of a hammering and you know yeah. you you could have braces and hat tricks in that game so i definitely wait for the lineups before making any, you know any decisions it's it's, mm. it's, it's a hard one between An- antonio and kane I, I probably i think if antonio starts the fa cup game i think i'd be protected by antonio but otherwise yeah i'd probably go for kane maybe yeah yeah he's, i mean if uh conte puts out a a, a decent side in that game. It could be, could be a rugby score. Could be. Um, and yeah, you you wouldn't want to miss that one if you were be uh, moving your players across. Um, Arsenal players uh, from the mood as is. Arsenal players like Emil Smith Rowe and TNA. Should we wait or sell? James, I wouldn't necessarily be in a rush to sell them. Um, Arsenal have looked pretty good, to be fair. Um, I would plan to remove them um, sort of before the European fixtures restart around mid-February. But um, if you've not got any, well, yeah, I wouldn't be in a massive rush to get rid of them myself personally. Ben, yeah, I'd, I'd be keeping them for the new when you get the new transfers with Forest up up on the Sunday. And then they play Liverpool, obviously second leg, and you get to see how the how the team plays. I mean, the, how the team lines up in the first leg on Thursday. So if uh, like Smith Rowe plays that game, he should play the second leg as well. So he might be back in the team by then. Plus, because they've lost lost at the weekend, they might change it up a bit again. Um, yeah. And I meant to say that about Liverpool as well, because Liverpool play in obviously Arsenal on Thursday this week. We get to see how they'll, what sort of team they'll put out for the first leg, and then we, we'll have a link in how they'll play in the second leg. Yeah, yeah it'd be interesting to see if they go strong in that first yeah. leg, weak in the FA Cup, and then strong in the second leg again. Yeah, surely you've got to cope for it when you're in the last four of a competition. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Very um, good. Yeah, I think I'd I'd keep. I think Arsenal um, are probably going to have an extra game stuck in that. Week in a couple of weeks time as well, so you're gonna have a lot of football, a lot of games to play, and they look fantastic. So yeah, and I'd probably look to take them out. Uh, they're home to Burnley in the last fixture as well before the international break, and I think then you can take them out because they're um, away to Wolves, and then they blank. So I think after that, 
going yeah. into February. I think I'd I'd take them out then, to be honest. But they look fantastic. Yeah, they do looking well. Full of praise for uh, Arsenal on this uh, pod recently. <laughs> <laughs> How a few months changes things. Yeah. Um, right. Just on those, um, just on those ever cup matches, Tom. On yep. Sunday, both Spurs and West Ham play at the same time at two o'clock, so you get to see the lineups for both games. Ah, so they'd be nice to us there, aren't they? Yeah, I, th- I think with that in mind, it'd be you know pretty easyish to make yeah. make a decision at that point. So uh, one o'clock on Sunday is when I'll know <laughs> yeah. who I'll be who'll be taking out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Like you say, be a straight shoot off there, won't it between them? But yeah, good and. Liverpool play it too as well, I think. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they do. Um, FPL Vobinho, um, is it better to concentrate on the premium clubs to try to fit in new uh, few players that have more fixtures to reschedule over the next month? I'm sure um, you'll have had your answer, mate, from obviously what we've been discussing over the previous, but thanks for your question. Cheers, mate. Um, Jimmy Mack. Do we think it's time to jump off the Chelsea defenders with tough games upcoming? And what defenders would you get in? Um, if you were to jump off a block and you had to put a block in, if, if, if just just hypothetical, if you had to put a block in now and, and go for the next month, what 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 team would you go for defensively? Because there's a, these these um, these games you're going to struggle with because there's a lot of top teams playing each other. Um, do you reckon, man? But I think I said it before, it's a tough because there isn't any really good def- <laughs> defensive teams in the Premier League apart from like no. Man City and Liverpool have, have good good spells. They're the, probably two teams I'll be looking at. Obviously, Man City short term have only got one game a week um, and they haven't got any games to rearrange. But like short term, Liverpool's probably the best fixtures. But then again, we don't know what sort of defence they're going to play. We'll, we'll get an inkling, I think, on Thursday when they play Arsenal. If they play strong team then, I think I will be going more towards Liverpool's short term. But um, West Ham's fixtures are nice, but West Ham are not that great at the back. No. So they they could concede one and it just ruins your clean sheet. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I'd probably want Man City again in February, so it's uh, probably just suck it in Suck it up and you know yeah. get on it. Yeah, just leave him in there, James. I think Ben summed it up pretty well. Um, I mean, with their blanks and the sketchy form and the injury hit defence, I do think it's time to at least move away from some of your Chelsea assets at the back. Yeah. Um, yeah, keep an eye on the transfer window, though. You know, they might be bringing Luca Dean in as cover at left back, or you know, there could be some moves there that. M- Make them more solid, but um, with those blanks coming up, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be holding on to a complete block or anything like that. You certainly need to be moving away uh, from Chelsea for a little while at least. Yeah, Fergie. I, th- I, I think I get off all of them. Um, I think if you had to, if you twisted my arm in terms of a defence, I think I agree with Ben in terms of Liverpool, but. I think it's best of a bad bunch because um, Allison's got COVID, haven't he? You know, and um, yeah. I agree that Salah and Mane are not just attackers; they're a massive, massive part of that team. I don't think that Liverpool have probably played without them, apart from like you know a complete second string in in years. Have they? I, I can't think of a game where both of them have been out. So I think it's going to be, yeah. you know, I think it's going to be hard. I think it's the only time of the season this month in the last two seasons where I would move to a three-four-three. <clears throat> And I try and take advantage of players like you know Mora, Bowen, all these kind of players, and maybe switch it up. Um, I wouldn't be taking out any Man City personally. You know, as Ben as Ben said, you don't want to be messing around transferring players in and out. But I mm. think you know on Friday the fourteenth, personally, I'll be looking to get rid of of my last Chelsea defender because they go City Spurs, blank blank blank. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I do. Yeah. Not great for them, does it? It's worth noting that um, Liverpool have, uh, since Klopp's been there, January has always been the worst month for Klopp, and it, it happens every year. Yeah. And um, we have an absolute nightmare. Sometimes we don't pick up any points at all in the league. Um, if you believe in those sorts of things, that might be something to factor in. Hopefully, it won't happen again this year. But uh, 
certainly has in previous years. That's because he plays Scrooge every Christmas and he's whinging <laughs> about the, the amount of games everyone has to play and blah, 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 blah. It's, <laughs> it's the punishment for that. If he just keeps his mouth shut and just gets on with it like the rest of it, we'll be all right. <laughs> it's karma. Anyway, Jimmy Mack, you've been on again, mate, and you've sent your team in. He's thinking of um, Son and Kane in for Salah and Tellers out for Trent and maybe Fordham for KDB or Alonso for KDB. What do you guys think? I'll just have a quick read out of his team. De Gea in the net, Rudiger, Cancelo, Alonso and Tellez. Foden, Bilva, Mount and Salah, Ronaldo, Yotta. Um, what do you reckon, Fergie? I think over the next two weeks, I'm looking to get rid of De Gea, Tellez, Alonso, Rudiger and Salah and have a, have a bit of a reshuffle with your funds there. I think you've got an you know, opportunity to move to some other players, um, but United defensively just look awful and their fixtures are not the best either. They've got Villa twice, then West Ham as well. I just can't see I just can't see any, you know, or many clean sheets at all. So I'm not sure how much Edison is. He's probably still quite reasonable, I think, in price, I would guess. Million, I'd probably just move on to Edison if you can. Um but but yeah, I would I'd get rid of United and Chelsea defenders. Um I I do it this month as well, while it's like a short month. Yeah, because you're not going to really feel the impact, do you? Um, and then just you know you can start going to February kind of fresh. Then you know with a decent defence. Yeah, James. Um, well, Salah has to go, obviously. So I'd bring in Kane. Um, Trent is an essential pick in my book. Um, although you might be these these transfers, you'll need to time them depending on how the fixtures yeah. lie. Um, I would definitely be considering going three at the back there, um, beefing up the midfield. I think Sterling looks good and KDB as well. But um, again, um, trouble is this month, Man City's only with, with, with the lack of fixtures. Um, yeah, you might want to hold far on those uh, midfield moves. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think you covered it all there. Yeah, he's got a lot of fires there, hasn't he? Yeah. Obviously with the Chelsea defence, you know double Chelsea defence, double United defence. Um I think Shaw is suspended for the next game for United, so Tellers will probably play. Right. Um you'll come in for that first villa game definitely as the replacement left back. <sighs> yeah, there's a lot there's a lot to deal with there. I, I think Fergie's probably got it right where he, you're gonna have to use this short month as your your reshuffle and and hopefully that doesn't harm you as much as it would if you were in a busy month and you've you've uh, lost quite a few transfers. But yeah, Salah to I mean, Kane, sensible. Go on, sorry, Ben. I mean, like, yeah, the Chelsea players have to go at some point next month, but like, they're not that desperate to go this month, I think, because they've got the extra games. Not yeah, great yeah. games, and they're not they're yeah. not looking very good. They ain't got no Mendy now. Kepa's going to be in goal. Yeah. Um, he's what's he? He's like. Two million or something, but you don't want to be bringing him in because <laughs> you're gonna to have to chance him out. So, but um, yeah, you move your United defenders definitely, definitely get off them. And like I think, say I think, three four three. I think the two the two subs maybe Salah for Kane and Tellers for Trent. If that gives him the funds to do that, yeah, maybe that might minimise the damage. Um, definitely got to get Trent in there. Yeah. Yeah. Just like um, Rudiger to Bowen, you'd probably save 0.8 maybe there as well. So yeah. you can maybe upgrade De Gea to Edison. Yeah. They were on four, aren't they? And then got misfiring Ronaldo, <laughs> Covid Foden. Um, and Alonso is looking to get replaced by uh, a dodgy left back from Everton. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, mean, I think. I think making the uh, the first moves, uh, obviously Salah, um, Tellez. We say it depends on the Chelsea side as well what they put out. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Ronaldo's one of them as well. How many times do we chat about Ronaldo on here? And you flip flop because he's he is so dangerous. It's annoying watching him with his attitude, and he mm. he doesn't work hard enough. I don't think it, but. How many times he's just in the right position and he could do that two or three times in a game quite easily. 
Um, I think a lot of people might move away from him and then be stung because they have got decent fixtures as well. Um, they come up of, up against a very good Wolves side today. Um, I think come up with a, a bit of a lesser defensive powerhouse. I think um, he might do all right. What's a combination age up, of, up front of United anyway? I might be able to get myself a game. Spans with 70s, isn't they? Was it? Jesus 30, 37 and 34, maybe? 71? Oh, it's like, where's the youngsters? Where's the young lads? Uh, They're playing the 4 2 2 2 press with uh, yeah. all guys in their, 30, you know, in their yeah. mid 30s. Mental. <laughs> it's just not going to work. It just doesn't seem right. The whole Ralph Ranyuk thing, it's just going to mess. Um, uh, yeah. It sounded great, doesn't it? It sounds great on paper, but it's just not quite happening. Um, Do you think we're I'll... being a bit harsh on Ronaldo, though? Like, he's got 14 goals this season, five star mans. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that is what, yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at, is yeah. that. But then it's, it can be so frustrating when you get Watching a few him. blanks, yeah. especially with the fixtures as well, when they've got the fixtures and when yeah. you're thinking, ah, pissing out, and you're looking at like Antonio's fixtures, or you're looking at like Kane. Maybe knocking a few goals and against the bigger sides and stuff, and it's quite easy to lose the faith with him. But as we know, Dream Team loves to come bite you back on the arse. And, and Ronaldo, if there's anybody good enough to do it, he, he could do it big time as well with with a hat trick. And um, yeah, I do think we're being harsh, but you got to be harsh. What you see is what yeah. United. I think it's crap, more United. It? I think yeah, it's more it is. United than it Ronaldo. Is. It is. You put United, uh, you put Ronaldo into the City side. I think he's on twenty-two exactly. goals this season, mm. and that 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 is the difference. The amount of chances that are created, and that he wouldn't have to work as hard in that City side. But because United are playing so badly, he's having to try and try and press. He's having to try and do bits that really you shouldn't be asking of him anyway. Surely Ronaldo will actually drop in price this week. Um, he went up 0.1 last week, bizarrely, didn't he? Um, 8.6 million. He's he's got a drop this week, hasn't he? After that, surely. Point so. <laughs> three has to home to Wolves. His expected points accumulation have been at least eight or ten. I had to guess on the Dream Team coach. Sure, he's got to drop point three. He's got to. I would think so, but uh, who knows? Yeah, I mean, he <laughs> might go up point one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, next question's in. Two questions from Lee Hooper. Good old Lee. Uh, it's good to hear from you, mate. Uh, here's my two questions. Number one, he's six in his mini league and 150 points off the top. Is catching the leader at all plausible? If so, do I need to start going different now? Obvious replacement for James is at Trent, but they all have him. Some with Robertson. Should I stick to the obvious there or take a punt due to position? We'll touch on that question first because I think you might give the next question away. So, um, James, what do you reckon, mate? 150 points is quite a big gap, but it's not impossible, particularly in Dream Team, um, where you can get wild swings of points. Of points, um, so out of all the formats, I think it is probably possible. We've still got half a season to go. Um, what I would say is that don't avoid the the really obvious picks, though. Like the example he's given here is uh, James to Trent. Um, I, I wouldn't be using something like that to go different. I think you can be. I think you're just the danger there is you just fall further away. Um, so if there's an obvious pick, just do it. But probably you you want to be looking at your, your midfield in the forwards, um, where you should go a bit different, I think. Um, but yeah, don't don't. If there's a blind in the obvious move, even if the the other guys have got it, I think um, I think you've still got to do it. But pick your pick the players that you want to differentiate from from elsewhere. I think probably midfield and forwards. Yeah, them. I think uh, James nailed it there. I totally agree with him. Um, Trent's got, uh, got to get... You've got to pick Trent. You've got to get him in your team. He's Just pick the best players and then we obviously differentiate with the with the rest of your team. Yeah. Fergie? Yeah, just, you know, for me, Trent, Cancelo, um, Salah when he's there, you just don't 
touch him. And I, I think there's enough players. Like, you know, I just looked. I was really surprised see that Bowen is only 4% owned. Lucas Moura is like 3% owned. You can go for these kind of players while still holding on to the essential ones. So I think, you know, if you, if you look hard enough, there's still a lot of really good low-owned players that have got really good fixed in January you can attack. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Completely agree with, with all that. You said he started last month by taking out Antonio and Bowen. We've, uh, we've had quite a bit of this on the uh, Discord group. Um, I'm very tempted to start this month by putting them back in. Seems a silly merry-go-round, but last month's mistakes have been and gone. My clean slate headspace says I like the look of them again. What's our thoughts? Uh, Fergie. I'll be all over them like a cheap suit, i got to be honest. Yeah. I, would, uh, <laughs> I, just, I just think with the combination of their fixtures, form, and low ownership, you know, they, it, it may not work out right, but the, you know, the kind of factors you look for when looking for players are all, are all there. They're all aligned. It may yeah. not work out, but at least you're giving yourself a chance of coming back. So, yeah, I, I'd be all over them, definitely. Yeah. Ben? Yeah, agree again. Uh, totally agree. The fixtures are there. Bowen's on fire. Antonio's back in form. You've got to you've got to go for it. I think bring them back in. Start start again. And just forget what happened. Start start from where you are. And uh, look at the best options. And they they're two of the best options for this month. Yeah, James. One hundred percent agree with um, Fergie and Ben. Basically, yep, and I third that. I think um, you got to just let them mistakes go, aren't you? Um, at the time, like you say, Bowen and Antonio were both having quiet spells. Mm. Um, once he's jumped away from them, the, the actual moves—I can't remember the players he put in now. I'm not too sure, but they were the right moves at the time. When you look at them, I think do you not get unlucky with the COVID cases? I think it might have been. Was it? I think the Spurs players. Spurs players. He moved yeah, he to went United. to Mora. Well, uh, it's just hard luck, isn't it? He, yeah. yeah, he just he he moved and, and made the right moves, like you say, with the fixtures and other things and form, and it just didn't work out. So hopefully, uh, Lee, if you do put Antonio and Bowen back in, it's not your your shite luck that's uh, going to break him again, uh, because I think there are quite a few of us here that are are looking at those. Um, right. <laughs> Move on to Walmart Statham. I think I think we have covered the uh, the Liverpool team. Is Yotta likely to be as effective without Manny and Salah in the team? Uh, he knows a lot. A lot of the creativity comes from the fullbacks, but equally Salah and Manny create a lot of chances, and he can't see Origi and Minamino being as effective. So concerned, Yotta Yotta won't also be as productive. Do you share that that fear, James? Because I know we we. We've said about how you ought to, like, as you've got him in the side, you're not going to move yeah. him on, you're, you're going to leave him in there. Um, no doubt the number of goals that Liverpool score will go down. Um, those guys are very important to the side, obviously. Um, Yotta will be probably the most important front player, though, so a lot more will go through him. So, and given his, his you know, he's relatively cheap in the game um, I won't be moving him on I think there'll be other fires to fight um, I'm not sure I'd bring him in right now but I certainly wouldn't get rid of him um, but yeah I mean it, it could pan out I think he, he'll I think he'll still tick over um, but um, potentially not um, we're not going to be blowing teams away like we would normally be, be doing yeah Ben yeah I know like Obviously, Salah and Mane are big misses, but when you've got somebody like Trent and Robbo putting balls in, balls into you, you're going to have lots of chances to score. I think he's still a good option for this month, and he's got plenty of games. If, if you didn't have him, would you be putting him in? I've, I think I still probably would. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, obviously, Firmino, when he's back from COVID, he's a great player. He'll put balls on the plate for him as well. Yeah, we are talking about Liverpool, and we we are talking about yeah. still world class players. <laughs> they're not um, they're not no nobodies that are coming into the side. And uh, the, Fabinho's back. Um, obviously Henderson back for Alaska. Uh, they still got a bit about them, aren't they? 
um, Liverpool. They've still got a little bit in midfield. And, uh, Morton played the other week, didn't he? But maybe maybe now with a few more players back, um, that's sorted itself out. <laughs> it's difficult. I I don't I don't think I'd put him in if I didn't have him. In all honesty, I don't. I, I think I'd probably look towards an all son or or someone in that that similar price bracket. But um, if I've got him, and I, I do have him in quite a few teams, Jota, I'm definitely not moving him on. He's definitely not going anywhere. I can, I can still see him bagging some goals this month. Definitely. What do you reckon, Fergie? Yeah, I, I, you know, you're not, you're not, you're going to want him in February anyway. So even if you, you know, I again, my you could look at the FA Cup lineup because they're home to Shrewsbury. You know, so if he does play in that one, that could be a, a fixture. You know, which he could really do well in as well. Um, mm-hmm. They've got Brentford. Uh, next next weekend, their um, rumored additional game is home to Leeds as well, uh, yeah. which will be rearranged as well. Then they've got Palace, Leicester. It you know it it it, it kind of smacks of a kind of move that you'd regret if you took him out. So mm-hmm. I, you know I just wouldn't. Um, but I th- I think I'd stick him in. I think I'd stick him in this weekend if he started against Shrewsbury. If yeah. not, you could maybe wait till the following weekend against Brentford. Um, he could even be on pens. Um, I don't true, know. Yeah. Would it be Henderson? Maybe I'm not. I'm not even sure it would be on pens. Sure. If, uh... Well, it depends if Mil- Milner's on the pitch, doesn't it? Milner's number one penalty taker. If he's on in the on the pitch, I think he, even when Salah's on there, I think uh, Milner's still number one. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know. I, w- I would think Jota would probably be number two or three. Yeah, yeah. certainly. Yeah. Good point. Right, we'll jump on to Adam Wade's question. Um, is this the right balance of my squad for a, a transfer refresh? Last week you mentioned not many City games for January. Should I stick or twist on these City assets? Kane in for Salah is his number one transfer. Great pod as always, lads. Cheers, Aaron. I'll just have a run through your team just so everyone's aware of what you've got. You've got Edison and then a back three of Cancelo, Rudiger and Laporte. You've got Bilva, Madison... <laughs> Sterling, Mora, and a front three of Salah, Yotta, and Ronaldo. Um, obviously, Kane in for Salah. That's what he's thinking of. With them City lads, five City lads out of his team. Obviously, not many games this month. Would you um, would you be moving a couple of? You reckon, Fergie? No, if you're going to want them back, <laughs> and they could score in any game. <laughs> they could score in any game. I, I think what I would do with the team, I go start to Kane. I, I'm personally tempted to move. Ronaldo to Antonio. I think I think I'm, I think I might do that um, because I think with those fixed West Ham, especially since you haven't got you know Bowen, I think I'd want some kind of West Ham coverage, and then wait till next weekend, then till the uh, Friday the fourteenth, and then I would then take out Rudiger. Um, I'm not sure before exactly. Oh, oh I go to Trent. Yeah. I go to Trent. Yeah. So they'd be the three moves that I would make. Ronaldo to Antonio is you know a bit of a. I think an aggressive move. I think the other two moves are no-brainers. Yeah. James? Do you know what I'm going to say? I totally agree with Fergie's move. All, all three moves, all three of those moves make sense to me. Um, I think I think he's nailed it, to be fair. Yeah, makes complete sense. Ben? Yeah, agree. Um, not much uh, uh, talking about Son, though, are we? Like, Do you not think... No. It's worth doubling up on Kane and Son. I know the Antonio yeah. fixtures are really good. Just just throwing it out there to uh, mm. see your opinions. I, I honestly think it depends on the FA Cup liner because after that they yeah. go Chelsea, Arsenal, Chelsea. So they're not really nice fixtures. But that Morecambe one could be a hat-trick game for whoever starts up front, couldn't it? Mm. I really do mm. think, for me, it depends on that. Are, um, they, yeah. are they not going to drop a Spurs rearrangement in there? Could do. They are, yeah. It's um, it is well. It's either going to be out of uh, Arsenal, Leicester, Burnley, Brighton. So it could be a decent game. Arsenal, yeah, yeah. It's could be an extra one. Could be. Um, yeah, I have to have to be looking at Kane and Son double up. It really, I, I even even if you got more as well in. In the midfield four and just 
and just go for him. I think the yeah. fact that you can get more a cheap midfielder, I think, yeah. has put me off the Kane and Son. That's the only reason, though. I, th- I think yeah. if Mora wasn't there available, having two of the front three, you know, I think it'd be really good. Um, yeah. Edgy but I think if play. I hadn't, I may have gone for Son, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good point. Good point. West, West Ham don't have a uh, European game until March now, do they? Because they're not in the playoffs. They got straight through for finishing first. But obviously yeah, Spurs so they... are out of Europe as well, but but they've got three games to rearrange. That's it. That that's what um, mm. like obviously is attractive towards the the Spurs games now. Um, their improvement. We know they've 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 all had their COVID cases as well, which kind of puts you in a look. Obviously, they could still be their uh, their their opponents could still be uh, struck down with COVID, but. If they're struck down in, like, say, a game week, who one opponent, they're still ready to play yeah. in the midweek. So Spurs are quite safe in that thing. I, I don't know, we've got a list of all the all the teams that have had their COVID cases run through their squad, kind of thing. Um, it's a, an interesting one to keep an eye on. Uh, Weather appealed as well, haven't they? In the um, yeah. conference, and there's a very, very outside chance that they could use that midweek to even play Rens if it gets rearranged. It, it is imagine? an outside chance, but, but if yeah. they do and they do win, they're then suddenly back in Europe, which again kind of changes <laughs> things into February, mm. doesn't it? Yeah, and it means anybody who wears Spurs, Spurs treble up are, are, um, are looking pretty good. I think the Spurs defence then comes really into play because they're really, yeah. really cheap and they look really, really tight under Conte as well. Yeah, they do. Mm. They have improved massively. Um, we touched on the Reguilón and Emerson Royal um, looking quite attacti- attackive as well. But yeah. like I said, they have, they have shored up a lot as well. So not giving many chances away. Um, yeah, I think, that, I think that covers it for you there, Aaron. Um, a bit of... Um, <laughs> not many options that we've come up, but we're pretty, pretty much in agreement with what, what you should do with that team. Um, right, the Cash League... The Mini League Top 10 um, updated after the United game, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Yep. So we've got... Who's going to have a, who's gonna have a read of it? I think, Ben, it's your turn to redeem yourself. <laughs> Don't forget him in number four, what his name is. Yeah. Uh, let, let's go. Right. In, num- <laughs> in 10th place, Sir Alex FC, Alex Colt. Ninth place... Fricks DT11, James Fricker. Come on, I'm coming for you, Bertie. I'm right behind you, mate. Oh, James. <laughs> uh, in joint seventh place, Steve Leg Steg DTT3, and the champion from last year, Fergie Time, Andrew Ferguson. <laughs> just about. Ooh. I was up to fourth, I think, last week. I was getting a bit. I was getting a bit ahead of myself, I think, and then uh, falling back down. Um. Sixth place, Henry Cartridge winging it. Fifth place, Kerry Jones, Goldie Looking Chain. Fourth place, Ooh. Heath Robson, Panenka hey, FC. Well hey. Hey. <laughs> uh, third place, Jonathan Perrot, Braveheart. And these two keep swift, keep changing every week. Yeah, they do. Second place, Dan Sherwood, Gold Hunting. And top of the shot, Alex FC two Alex Cole. It's definitely tightened up up top of there. Yeah. Um, was he just under a hundred points now from tenth to first? Top three separated by what fifty six points. So it's getting closer, getting more competitive. Um, there were fears that one of them were going to run away with it at one point, but there's the top ten. Don't forget game week twenty as well. Is a fifty pound cash week, so um, see what games are in that. I'm not too sure whether it's a double week or not. That one. We're waiting for the news, aren't we? And then... Yeah. Heath was the player. I I had, I had the ding dong with all all of last season. We were like first and second for months. Heath Robson. Mm-hmm. On the, on oh, the wow. leaderboard. Yeah, yeah. Last year, myself and Heath were first and second for about wow. three months. And then he just kind of dropped off at the end. He had a bit of hard luck. He did. He picked up Bam. He he brought a Bamayang in. And when um, 
Aubameyang just randomly like had malaria, and they yeah. had like a plum home game Ooh. against Southampton, and they won like three 0 and Lacazette scored two. He brought him in for that game, and I didn't have him, and that's that's the kind of luck you need to win to win three. Yeah. <laughs> just malaria. A bit of malaria knocking out, <laughs> knocking about. Did he, uh... did he do it before the price changes or something like that? I think I think he brought him in like the week before with that fixture in mind. Yeah, and now uh, he, he's just ah. really unlucky. That's really harsh look. Really harsh look. Right, on to another league, the differential league. Obviously, the January, uh, December's finished. Um, the community finished. Uh, not quite, on... not quite. We've still got mid game, midweek games. We can't. <laughs> Have we still got one more week in this game? Yeah, we've still got the Carabao World Cup. Sorry. Right? Is it in on this week? It is, isn't it? Yeah. I do apologise. do apologise. Transcend <laughs> it early. Because um, my players aren't playing. Um, <laughs> so it's, at the moment, at the moment, out in the lead, Fergie's there on one, two, four. Come um, on. Going seven, yeah. 40 points from Laporte this month. Second place, me. You'd have never thought that a few months ago. Um, Smith Road done all right, 27 points for me this month. Um, one or three. <clears throat> the community, uh, the Yotta this month with 24. They're in third on one or one. James. You, you've had to be picking last every single month, but you still you, you're know, hanging I've, in there. I've had, a, I've had an absolute stinker with Jesus. Seven, I five points. That's that's horrific. It is a bit of a. It's better than um, Aubameyang. He got minus five for the community. <laughs> didn't he? I think that's worse. But, um, five <laughs> points is pretty that bad. A, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was a bad month. Um, uh, Ben's. Bringing up the rear at the moment with uh, Thiago Silva, 15. Started really well that month as well with yeah. Thiago Silva. Just got an injury. Yeah, yeah, and then got backwards a little bit of the Chelsea defence. Uh, yeah, bringing up the rear with 53 points, but obviously, as I shown early on in the uh, thing, it could quickly change. I know the, uh, the the community choice has been chosen for January, and they've gone for Bowen. Right. So we'll be picking up from the rest. Um That'll be up on Twitter, as and when we get around to those picks uh, after this week's finishes. Um, if you've not been over to the website yet, uh, get across to dreamteamtonic.com. You've got Connor's Dream Team blog on there, Steve's Sky Fantasy Football blog, and Mike's Fan Team blog. Uh, all great work from them. <laughs> if you play them fancy games, get over there and give them a read. Again, if you've not uh, been across to our Patreon site, uh, to support the lads, patreon.com forward slash dreamteamtonic. Get over there. Um, I say it's cheaper than a latte. I don't drink coffee, but I've been told it's cheaper than a latte for the cheapest uh, subscription. So, um, yeah, uh, good to speak to you, lads. And it's um, New Year. Same shit, different year, they say, don't they? But, um, it is, but it's, it's good to speak to you. Uh, we're all still here. We're, um, uh, it's been a bit of a busy time, at Christmas, uh, to try and get our stuff out and... And uh, stick to stick to deadlines and <laughs> and get the right dates right, eh, Fergie? When, uh... oh, oh yeah, and that as well. I was ready. <laughs> I was mic'd up at uh, half past seven last night for the podcast, and uh, uh, found out it was this evening. Do a podcast. Cancel plans. Cancel dinner. Change babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but we've got there in the end. We've got there in the end. I do apologise, mate, but um, it's always good to have you on, Fergie. So cheers. Cheers to oh, appreciate for joining us. Me on. Really enjoy it. it really, it really helps me kind of you know focus the next month as well. We do these, so it's uh, no, it's, it's really good. Thanks for having me on. Guys. Yeah, good stuff. Um, cheers, James. As usual. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Bob. Thanks, mate. Uh, Thanks, lads. See you later. <laughs>